You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled Digital Strategies for Field Service Companies. What should the digital strategy be for today's oil and gas services companies? Exposed and buffeted by unbounded cost and productivity pressures? Well, not your dad's game plan, that's for sure. The wave of digital transformation unleashed by the constant advancement of technology is unrelenting, and services companies are actually going to be more impacted than their customers. Think about it. All it takes is for one service company to innovate even a bit, and the next procurement will favor that supplier. The buyer doesn't even have to take advantage of digital solutions to demand digital innovation of their supply chain. And there's plenty of room for innovation and improvement. Most Alberta-based suppliers, certainly those with revenues less than a billion dollars, are woefully behind in adopting digital technology. I think it was the good times from 2009 to 2014, with the high prices and a raging growth agenda from oil sands that thwarted the innovation agenda. The suppliers were all about expanding capacity as they needed to be. The past three years, however, have been about capital constraint, price reductions, idling equipment and crews, and there's been scant dollars to pursue digital innovation. Well, in my view, the same digital trend lines that are driving the operators to change are there for the taking by the suppliers. Let's just go down the list of what some of these examples are, and we'll begin with cloud computing, which helps convert fixed IT costs to variable and gives access to unlimited computing horsepower and storage at reasonable cost to anyone. How about networks? Wireless networks have progressively grown to where they now span much of the oil and gas fields of play, and where they do not, field workers are rarely a day away from syncing up. Then there's presence. Virtually every employee, whether commanded to or not, has found the lure of smartphones and tablets irresistible, and they have them at work already. And finally, sensors. Low uh, power, affordable, and increasingly capable sensors are within reach of virtually any business bringing voice command, self-diagnosis, and precise real-time measurement to the masses. So where might a supplier of goods and services to the industry find opportunity using digital capabilities? Well, let's begin with safety. Oil and gas is all about safety. Every single company in the industry has in its mission or value statement or company ethos a robust statement of respect for the environment, a commitment to zero harm, or some other equally unobjectionable stance. But should this just translate into productive clothing and hard-toed boots? Well, in my view, suppliers are underinvested in the kinds of digital solutions that improve their safety performance. People, assets, equipment, and rentals are still, for the most part, off-grid and invisible, except to the naked eye. This simply won't work in a world that features much more automation, drones, robots, and analytics. Suppliers will be far better served by having their crews happily broadcasting their presence to help with man-down situations, evacuations, incident data capture, fatigue, and of course idle equipment. There's another big benefit too, better service optimization. All that safety data can also be used to improve productivity and service levels. There's a clear market opportunity for some suppliers to position themselves as leaders in becoming the ultimate digital service company. There are as yet no clear and obvious leaders in this area. Next is around smart assets. Suppliers have had a good run selling dumb kit, that is, equipment without the ability to self-diagnose or report operating condition or off-grid staff or invisible rental assets. But the days of the dumb asset are over and smart assets, those that are festooned with sensors, are here. Those autonomous mine haul trucks are just the first wave. If your assets are still in the dumb category, they will soon run out of interested customers, except in some brownfield applications that are too far gone to be smartened. Strapping some sensors on kit is just the first step. All those sensors will throw off a ton of data, which will need to be handled. Is that just a job for the customer? Or is there some sexy new business model lurking in there by capturing that data, analyzing it, and selling the results back to the customer? That's what some vendors of turbine technology do. Suppliers are going to need to give thought to how data from their front office, that is their assets, crews, rentals, and equipment, can be turned into a new revenue source. Next is around data. Oil and gas operators are progressively turning their attention to the quality of their data assets. In the main, they have concluded that crappy data quality is holding back the adoption of powerful new digital technologies, and they are investing in cleaning up their data as well as embracing data-driven suppliers who also value high-quality data. 
The days of a supplier feeding field data late to the customer on paper or having out-of-date systems that it cannot easily integrate with operator databases are coming to an end. But there's a second key data development. As smart assets penetrate the market and low-cost sensors spew torrents of data, operators will struggle to make sense of it all. Much of that data should stay with the asset, sitting on a controller beside the asset, but some said a subset should be handed along to a control room for supervision. Some should be fed into other critical systems for asset performance management, and some should head to planners in an even more distilled form. Suppliers will need to consider how their data assets will play a bigger role in a larger and more connected world. Next is around ERP systems. The last great wave of ERP adoption among suppliers was certainly prior to the downturn of 2014, and in my experience, dates back to the 2006 to 2008 period. These warhorse systems are now well and truly due for an overhaul for the digital age. Indeed, suppliers who try to run their businesses on ERP versions that predate 2014 are probably using systems that were designed before cloud computing, smart devices, and analytics. This just won't do. They will, if they are not, uh, have not already done so, become an impediment to embracing a digital future if they're not replaced or overhauled. As painful as it sounds, suppliers need to confront their ERP systems to determine their viability in an increasingly digital world. I'm betting the ERP systems will be found wanting. Next is other business systems. Just as there's a wave of transforma uh, transformation building in ERP, there are smaller, similar waves about to unlock in the dozens of other systems that comprise the supplier's information systems environment. Advanced customer analytics, the digital supply chain, yes, suppliers to suppliers need to be digital too, the connected worker, the workplace of the future, all are here or are undergoing dramatic change. This is a bit more of a thorny issue to address because there are likely lots of systems involved. Investment will take more than two budget cycles to address, I'm betting, as most systems will need upgrading or replacing. Next is new business models. The great thing about change is it creates space for incredible innovation in business models. I've already mentioned one new business model, selling specific asset performance data for profit. But here's five more. How about Uber for the field? Apply cloud computing, smart devices, and equipment sensors to create new procurement models and new collaborative business models for field services companies. Solutions are market ready now. And how about Cloud Pump? Upload downhole pump operating data to an analytic engine in the cloud in near real time to allow for predictive pump maintenance regimes across multiple operators and suppliers. This is available through GE and their Predix platform. Or how about field inventory? How about converting specific spare parts inventories to pooled inventories across multiple inventory holdings to lower the overall cost of inventory? This is in trials in the UK. How about virtual logistics? Pool logistics operations across multiple players in a specific field to reduce less than truckloads, lower carbon emissions, and reduce driving incidences. This is already in place in many other industries. And finally, integrated operations. How about creating a single integrated services coordinator across multiple services and logistics in a single basin to reduce service costs? This is already in place in Norway for vessels, helicopters, and shore-based coordination for the Norwegian North Sea. Well, here are four steps to move forward. If I were a supplier, I personally don't advocate a wait-and-see approach. There's more than a few suppliers who have grasped the new world we are in and are hell-bent on owning it all. So here's a good four-step program to getting on with it. Number one is to revisit your business strategy. There's a good possibility that your assets are not going to be fit for purpose if they're not smart assets. As a result, you need to revisit your business strategy to determine how you could reposition your company and its assets and services in what will be a profoundly more digital world. New business models beckon. Number two is to embed a digital strategy. While I no longer believe it's possible to have a business that ignores digital or does not have a digital bent to its business model, we are not yet at a place where digital completely trumps business. Therefore, you can, for now at least, consider your approach to digital developments somewhat separately from your business strategy. Your digital strategy should consider these new business models, the role of data, 
and possible futures that involve a lot more automation, analytics, and devices than today. Number three is to sort out your system's footprint. Unless your information systems are two years old or less, it's highly likely they are not designed for a digital age. So set out a roadmap that allows a progressive and cost-effective approach to upgrading your business infrastructure. The upgrade should line up with the business strategy and digital strategy. And if the system isn't key to the strategy and it won't help create a digital future, defer any change. And then last but not least is to rethink your capabilities. The digital world is going to need new skills that you probably don't have on staff. Indeed, if you've done a number of layoffs and curtailed hiring, there's a good chance you don't have enough of the technically literate types in the ranks to help guide your way to the future. This transition is so profound, you may need to get some outside help. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.